envy and its ugly head. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Brothers, I just came across a video of uh, two members of the pop group B2K. Now, for you who don't know, uh, B2K is a male pop group. I guess you would say pop R&B group that uh, was huge in the 2000s. And uh, they still tour and travel the world and the country, but they were very huge and, and at their peak in the 2000s. Now, these young men are a bit younger than me, so you know I never purchased their music, but I definitely would hear some tunes on the radio because they were everywhere, man. They were huge. I definitely know a couple of the members. Uh, they got some limelight, um, one more so than, than the others, uh, Omarion being the lead singer and the front man. And uh, I kind of found out uh, about Lil Fizz uh, through the media, but I think there's two or three other members. Now, in this video I, I, I witnessed, it was Lil Fizz apologizing to Omarion for violating and disrespecting uh, their friendship, their man code, and breaking the cardinal rule uh, of not betraying your brother, not coveting uh, your brother's woman. And uh, this is what happened. Uh, Lil Fizz slept with and started a, a relationship, a serious relationship with the ex-girlfriend and mother of Amarion's children. Uh, I believe her name is April Jones. Now, you know, this, this doesn't really surprise me, uh, you know, from either party, April Jones or Lil Fizz, but we're going to talk about it. You know, a lot of times a, a woman will try to hit you below the belt when uh, you break up with them or you, you, you hurt them or they perceive that you hurt them. And what better way to get at you than to sleep with someone that you love and that uh, you're close to. You sleep with a brother or a friend. What what greater way, what better way to hurt a man? Uh, that's personal. That was a personal slight, right? It wasn't just a stranger, you know. Uh, this, is what, this was someone he considered his brother, his bandmate. Now, how how does Lil Fizz uh, do something like this, man? And I'm going to tell you, it's called envy. Envy is the desire to possess a characteristic, an attribute, uh, a gift that belongs to someone else. And that's how we get to this point where a bandmate can not only sleep with the ex and mother of his bandmate, uh, mother of his bandmate's kids, but start a relationship, man, an open public relationship. That's envy. Um, he's always wanted what a Marion has. It's not so much about the female. You can replace April Jones with another female, with, 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 with Tammy Johnson or whoever. He would have done the same thing if given the opportunity because he's always envied his bandmate and his friend and his so-called brother. He's always wanted what that brother has. Uh, that's the worst betrayal and it's the ugliest. Brothers can accept uh, jealousy, uh, hate, it happens. A lot of times it's from people that don't even know you, that have no relationship with you. Envy comes from people who are close to you. Man, it could be from your spouse, from a friend, or from a friend of a friend that has access to you uh, yeah, family members, cousins, uncles, aunts. It's close. It's people close to you that see and feel your energy and power and impact 
to see your gift and talent, to see the attention you're getting. I guarantee you, man, it was envy that brought that man to that point to sleep with his bandmate's ex and mother of his children. Uh, listen, man, the only way you can nip that in the bud, man, first you gotta recognize that, I mean, this is a problem. I envy this guy. Because that's a powerful energy, man, to envy. It could take you over if you don't check it. So this is why meditation and being alone is so important. Because it gives you time to reflect and think. Not just about good things, but darkness and the bad things. And to address things. But when you're in a crowd, you're always moving. And shaking and moving and around people. You don't get the opportunity to be still and to be to your thoughts alone. Tell me, man, when, you get, when you're by yourself with your thoughts, a lot of things are revealed. And a lot of things will have to be addressed or they'll fester and they'll get to this point where you're across the line with someone. And uh, you got to check that, man. And it happens because of, of uh, low self-worth, low self-esteem, and not being comfortable in your own skin. You got to remember who you are, who made you, why you're here, and your purpose. Little Fizz's purpose was not to be the lead singer or the front man for B2K. I guarantee you he couldn't accept that. He couldn't accept that he was not the lead man. He probably thinks he's a better singer, a better performer, better looking. Then Amorion, maybe, I don't know. But it's obvious he envied this man. And when given the opportunity, he took full advantage. He fell into the trap. Now, when this hit the media that this brother had started a relationship with Amorion's ex and mother of his children, I saw Amorion on uh, a few interviews, on a few, and I'm telling you, man, like I said, I'm older than these brothers, but I'm telling you, this brother handled this situation like a true player, like a, like a true G, like a true alchemist. And uh, I don't even know the brother, but I was proud of the brother, the way he dealt with it. Now, was he struggling with it in private? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But what I saw publicly, this brother handled this responsibly and uh, with wisdom. And I was proud to see something like that, especially coming from such a young brother. Uh, he didn't get ruffled. You never saw the brother sweat. He didn't uh, insult, criticize, condemn anyone. He basically said, hey man, everybody has their own path. Everybody has to make their own decisions. God bless. And he kept it at that. And we come around full circle. And uh, obviously Lil Fizz's conscience was uh, condemning him. Yeah, your own conscience will condemn you. You'll condemn yourself. You'll chastise yourself at some point. Uh, when you remember who you are, and take ownership and accountability for what you did. So Little Fizz, fast forward, Little Fizz uh, apologized on stage in front of the, the world to Amarion for what he did. And Amarion accepted his apology. Man, that's a great lesson to witness. A great lesson to witness. And uh, both these brothers involved in this gained so much, man. They sacrificed something. I, I think uh, LaFizz sacrificed uh, ego and uh, some dignity, some pride. Uh, and so did Amarion. You know, uh, I'm sure people were criticizing him, saying he should have handled this differently. He should have fought LaFizz. Uh, he's been fake. He, need to, he needs to say what, what he's really feeling. I'm sure he's heard all of that. Uh, but he stayed the course. He stayed true to himself. 
So he sacrificed some of that uh, to get the bigger lesson, to, to attain the bigger lesson. And that's humility. And uh, yeah, and he probably, uh, Amarion probably had a chance to look into himself and, and see what, what role did I play in this? Because it's easy for us to play the victim. But man, when we take accountability and say, you know, what, what role did I play in this? Did I make Lil Fizz feel less less than? Did I, did I, uh, was I humble? Was I arrogant? Was I pompous? You know, as the lead and front man of the band. Was I, was I gracious? Was I not? I don't know any of these. I don't know the answer to any of these questions, but I'm just playing devil's advocate. But uh, that's the true, that's the true uh, recipe to enlightenment is ownership and accountability. Saying, what role did I play in this? Instead of playing the victim and pointing the finger. And uh, I believe that brother did that. And I believe he, that's why he was able to forgive and take the high road, so to speak. Man, uh, I've encountered this kind of stuff before, man, a couple of times in life, man. And uh, it's crazy stuff, man. You know, I've never wanted another man's woman. Uh, it, it, it was something um, weird about that, uh, wanting, wanting what another man has. Man, I could just go get my own. Anything that man has, if I want it, I could just go get my own if I want it. I don't have to take his or covet his. But, man, I, I'm telling you, I'll, I'll give you a quick story, and then we're out. Man, I'm telling you, I, I, I've experienced this all the way back to the seventh grade. Seven or eighth grade, eighth grade, bro. Went to the eighth grade prom with this with this young lady who was one of the baddest in the school. Now this wasn't my girlfriend, but we were vibing, you know, see where the thing can go. So she accepted my invitation to go to the eighth grade prom, but almost all the brothers in the school wanted her. But listen, man, she chose me. Now, brother, brothers, when, when I was young, man, I stayed uh, neat, clean, you know, uh, presentable. But I didn't have all the designer clothes. You know, I didn't even have a bunch of clothes. I had to mix and match. And I rarely had any extra money. You know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, that, that's just what it was, man. And so, but I was good in ball, and that's what people knew me as as a good ball player. But uh, you know, I was a handsome young man. But you know, maybe the ball, being a ball player, being a handsome young man, and you know, I had personality, charisma. You know, maybe that was, was drew you know certain young ladies to me. But I wasn't the life of the party. I'm not. I'm not the life of the party. Um, I'm. A, I'm an introvert. So I'm just laid back cat. I say all of that to say. My friend, one of my close friends. Uh, to my unbeknownst, uh, envied the fact that this young lady was going to the eighth grade prom with me, and uh, he wanted her. He wanted her to be his girl. Many, many young men did. So, you know, fast forward, we go to the prom, whatever. And uh, this is how bad it was, bro. I didn't have a suit. I had to wear my older brother's clothes. He's eight years older than me. So let me tell you, I come from humble beginnings, man. But anyway, we go through the whole thing with the prom, the eight grade prom. And so she and I are talking on the phone afterwards, trying to build see where it may go. But this is my boy, so I'm sharing a lot with him. He knows that, you know, I'm talking to two other females. He knows all this, man. He knows all my business. This is my boy. This is my best friend. Bro, one day, he calls me, and this is when three-way just came out. He calls me. He calls me, and he and I are 
chopping it up and he's asking me about these other two girls I'm seeing. And I'm going in, telling him about them and whatever. And then he says, uh, XYZ is on the phone, bro. The girl I took to the prom who I'm trying to build with. He had called me with her on three-way, bro. Listen, man, I just hung up. What was there to say? I hung up. Man, me and this brother didn't speak for six months. And he lived on the next street from me. And we didn't speak for six months, man. I, I, I just couldn't believe that. I was, I was hurt. Like, damn, man, why would you do that? And that's when I started to realize, like, damn, man. I didn't call it envy. I call it jealousy back then. But really, what I know now, it was envy. It was envy. And uh, that's a real thing, man. Uh, people will be envious of you, man. And he probably thought, man, why is she choosing him? Man, I got to, every time we go to a spot, to the movies or a skating rink or whatever, man, we got to front this brother money. He's always broke. He don't even have all the latest fashionable clothes. He's, he's, I don't know. He's probably thinking that. Why is she choosing him? But it is what it is, man. People will envy you for different reasons. And you may not even know. And sometimes we're blinded by our emotional connection to these people. That like We overlook things or we don't even see things for what they are because we're so connected to these people emotionally. We write it off like, nah, nah, I'm tripping. They, they, ain't, they didn't mean it that way or they didn't do that. But it's real, man. Envy comes from people close to you. So be mindful, you know, don't walk around on eggshells. Don't, um, don't claim to have enemies and haters. You don't want that energy drawn to you. But also be mindful. You may have to live in two or three different worlds. You know, but be mindful and uh, the universe, God will protect you. All right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments from me to you. As always, love. Peace.